Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here. As everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just realized I forgot to turn the fans off. That's probably obnoxious. Leaning over awkwardly so I can reach the switch. Is that better? I hope so. Let's have a little plant spotlight. Sometimes I pick up a plant and don't tell y'all about it. I've been holding on to this one for about, I'd say, six weeks. I don't necessarily think that that's the best time frame to give a full evaluation of a plant. I think a few months to really a year is best. But I didn't have anything else to talk about this week because I'm busy working on YouTube tax stuff. I figured it could be fun just sit down, talk about the plant and the good and the bad. I don't really have much bad to offer. Seemed like a good time for a plant spotlight. Not a full blown care video, not a full blown anything. Just looking at a nice plant and my thoughts and how it's been doing. So this is the Silver Streak Pothos. They were considered rare for a while. I'm gonna go ahead and say they're definitely not since I was able to pick this one up from my local hardware store. These are an Epiprinum Amplicimum, Amplicimum, however, I don't care how you say it. It's a type of pothos. I was drawn to this lovely plant because I just needed, needed, wanted a nice lush leafy plant to stick on the desk in my kitchen. Something that would look nice, not be really demanding of light or care too much about needing to be watered very often. So when I saw this, just a nice green, lovely pothos, figured that would be perfect for the spot. And so far, it has been. This has been a very sturdy house plant. Again, only been six weeks, so can't really tell you a ton about my personal experience with it, other than it has yet to throw any kind of a fit when it comes to watering. But it being a pothos, I've been careful to not be very heavy handed with the watering. You know, pothos of pretty much all the different forms, they're very prone to getting root rot if they get too much water. It's been very sturdy as far as not needing a ton of water. I've been able to let this dry out for up to, I think the max was about six days I went not realizing that the plant had needed some water, something along those lines. And right now it's also bone dry, but still not skipping a beat. Since I have a watering can right here, I'll go ahead and give it a small sip. The cash pot that it's in doesn't have any drainage. A small drink should be fine. We'll be hanging out in that water for probably 15 minutes and then I'll dump whatever's down there out. You can see the appeal to this one, right? It's just a lovely looking, what would be a tabletop plant or a plant you could put onto a moss pole and have it grow or into a basket and let it dangle. I think it might look kind of weird in a basket dangling because the foliage on it is more of that lance sword shape to it. But I don't know. That's probably just because I'm so used to thinking of a pothos in a hanging basket as having those nice round leaves. The foliage on this one is what I should have started off. That's the whole point of this plant is that it has beautiful foliage. See, there's a very nice metallic sheen on the leaves of these plants. The less light that they get, that's going to become more subtle and potentially even revert all the way back to green. See the newer foliage, it's not as pronounced and silvery, but it, you can still see that variegation in there, various shades of green. I like that because you end up with a plant that has multiple tones going on in there. Way to keep things mixed up, but not wild and crazy looking. So it's really just a nice, fresh looking plant, isn't it? Just the nice, graceful leaves, low maintenance. Like the lushness, there's some vibrance with the shine that you get on the newer foliage, and then you get that nice, clean aesthetic from the silver tones that's in the variegation. Really more of a silvery blue. So yeah, it's a lot of stripage though, right? Stripage, I don't, I don't know if that's a word, but you get what I'm saying. Very streaky. Lots of detail in there on those leaves. From the limited experience I have growing Epiprinum amplicimums, I'm probably saying it wrong. It's not a word I've ever had to say out loud before. I've only ever read about them. I haven't really talked about them in their full name before. Never had the silver streak before. That's new. From what I remember, the plant's not as fast to grow as the typical golden pothos or even the pinnatums, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your situation. Sometimes your regular run-of-the-mill pothos, those can be a bit aggressive and a bit much sometimes, right? They can take over. I know I've had plenty of situations where I've had pothos grown up my walls and ended up having to do some drywall repair because I let them go out of control. This one's going to take longer to do that compared to your regular pothos, that is. These propagate just the same as your regular pothos. Just, you know, cut them at the nodes. It's best that there's a little aerial root on there. Put them into a nice, well-drained, organic, rich mix, but moist, they'll take root and take off and then you got a whole new plant. The difference being that you may have to wait longer in between being able to take cuttings because they don't grow quite as quickly. This growth that's in here, that is all new. None of this was here about six weeks ago. This was nowhere near this full when I picked it up. Same for this piece in here. So there are spots on the plant where 
it's growing more vigorously than in other spots. And I'm just going to attribute that to being that this has been the side of the pot that's been facing outward, which is more towards the natural light that comes from the other side of the room. If I were to have this in a location where it was maybe just a couple of feet away from a window, especially a south facing window where the light wouldn't be hitting it directly, but maybe filtered through some shades. There'd probably be some more growth on there. Also, if I had remembered to water it, not let it go six days, I, not even six days. It had been probably dry, I'm guessing for about six days. It had been over two weeks since I had watered the thing. Whatever plant was going on that desk had to be a trooper. When I saw a pothos, I said, yeah, that'll probably be good. That or a Sansevieria. Different kind of maintenance compared to a Sansevieria and a whole different lushness about it. I think it's a nice looking plant if you just want something with some green on it. It's gonna be low fuss and low maintenance, something that's going to do better on the drier side than on the wet side for sure, unless you have a very warm situation. Maybe you have a atrium or something like that. The warmer it is, the more moisture they're going to want. My kitchen's pretty cool during the winter time. It's probably 68 to 72 in there. So this being consistently moist at all times, could be a problem if the plant weren't really established or in an older mix or in a container like this in this cash pot without drainage that would be bad that's why i haven't been going over the top with watering it and just making sure it gets a little drink about every 10 days something like that it has a few brown tips on it but that's not all that surprising and considering how dry the winter air is in my house it's really not that bad just a few brown tips that's not a big deal. I'm not bothered by that. That's going to happen, at least in my house with that dry air. Plants that like a lot of humidity, gonna get some brown on the foliage. I'm not one to run humidifiers and all that stuff inside of my house. Anything that needs a lot of humidity, I keep out here in the growth space. In the house, you gotta be able to take some drier air. When I have a plant that can take some neglect, I like to talk about it. Unfortunately, it also comes at the cost of putting my lack of care for the plant on blast. People can get judgy with that sort of thing in the plant community, but I think it's nice to have that full transparency so I can really tell you, hey, this plant's tough. And so far, this one, it's been a trooper. If a plant goes inside of my home, they have to be tough as nails. I'm not good at maintaining the grow space and a lot of plants in my house at the same time. Or for a couple months out of the year where I still have the tropicals in here, but I'm also doing a ton of work outside, I'm not great at balancing the two of those. One of the reasons I dropped the temperature in the growth space in April, because I'm working a lot outside, so things don't need to be watered as much in here, and it helps harden them off to go outside. And in the fall, same difference. I move the tropicals in, but I'm still doing stuff outside, so I keep the temperature low, partially because they're already adjusted to temperatures being more low, because they were just outside, where it was cooler. It means less work for me, don't have to water them as often if temperatures in here are 65 to 75, as opposed to 75 to 85 like they are this time of the year. They're, did I just, did I clarify? Did I make it better? Probably not. I really like the foliage. That's what it comes down to the most. It has beautiful foliage and it's been tough. Not a lot else to say about it. Not a lot else to say that I haven't already said. Like I say, throw it in a basket, put it on a pole. When you grow these on a moss pole, they, I don't, I'm not crazy about how it looks. That's just a personal preference thing. But overall, for the longevity of the plant, eventually I'll probably put it on a pole or just keep cutting away at it and giving those cuttings away or putting them into different planters and letting them fill out and do their thing. There are lots of options. You've got options. Always nice to have options. There it is. Cute little green plant. Nice stripage on the foliage. Thoughts, opinions, put them down below if you've grown them or you've grown them on a pole. Some um, do's and don'ts y'all have from experience. This is the community. The more we talk, the more we can all learn. If you have questions, something I didn't talk about, check the comment section. Maybe somebody else talked about it. I know I can like things crazy and wild and colorful, but I really just appreciate a nice green plant. That's what you're getting here. Just nice green leaves. It's given me the vibe of a cast iron plant of an Espedistra without the hassle of constantly spraying for spider mites and mealybugs, which is what I usually have to do when I'm growing a cast iron plant inside. Obviously not the same as a cast iron plant. Those have much larger foliage and everything, but the long blade-like foliage with some variegation on the inside and the fact that it can dry out pretty well, that those are the dots that I'm connecting there. That's how I got to that spot. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.